Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you. Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. Вы смотрите программу Ушанка Шоу! So, we are back to our cruise story, reading diaries of the angry Soviet wife about her trip in November of 1978, two weeks cruise in Northern Europe and France. So, the next entry is November 8, and it seems like they traveled all day from London to Copenhagen. So Nelly writes that she went on the deck wearing her pantsuit, which kind of interesting detail that she actually had. I'm not sure if she purchased the one or the one she brought alone, but it was pants and some kind of matching top. And not many Soviet women were wearing pants. So it's interesting how she specified what she was wearing that day. She saw uh, some birds that she was trying to feed, but they didn't accept any food and She mentioned there was a beautiful morning like she never seen before and the whole day was just wonderful. So it sounds like they caught really nice weather in November. Then she recalls England and it's quite interesting what she said. Uh, in Russian she said строгость без зла, деловитость без хвастовства, величие без бутафорий. That's pretty heavy and uh, I can translate it like that. England was impressive. It was strict but not evil. It was businesslike but without showing off. It was grandiose, but without being fake. So it's quite an interesting description on England. I wonder what you guys think. Then Nelly continues. In the evening, watched the movie. Unfortunately, she didn't say what movie, but I guess nothing impressed her. And after that, travlya anekdotov. So that's interesting uh, Russian expression, travlya anekdotov. And travlya sometimes means like you are poisoning something, but also there's a word like dogs when they bark a lot. Uh, so that's like they were barking the anecdotes. So they were just uh, sharing funny stories in the group. And that's a very interesting part of the Soviet culture that I didn't realize didn't exist here in America. Like when I'm at work here in the United States, uh, people just, if you have a free minute, they call it here bullshit and they just sit and they chat, they talk about maybe their trips, maybe their wives or children just general topics they don't mind to share uh, like about their family and friends uh, and of course sports and they can talk about sports for hours it's insane in Soviet Union I guess we were more like guarded I don't remember people ever sharing a lot about your own family with your co-workers or you know people in your school or your college but If there will be a big gathering, there's a lot of people maybe know each other a little bit. They'll be just traveling uh, anecdote. They'll be just talking. Hey, do you know this anecdote? And he shares that one. And somebody was like, hey, I have a similar anecdote on this topic. And it could be hours. People were just cracking jokes. And then, of course, if they're funny, they laugh. If they're not, they don't laugh. So this is the same thing happened here on the cruise ship. Then Nelly mentions that she couldn't recall most of the jokes. So if you spend a couple of hours just Tell an anecdote after anecdote. That's why we used to call them anecdotes, not jokes. And of course, you don't remember most of them, but she remembered the one. And unfortunately, it's actually a really cool joke, but it's hard to translate into English because there's the word uh, play. You know, the same word has a different meaning, but I'll, I'll try my best. So the joke is about that people on the cruise, all men can be divided uh, like a different category. So men could be tigers, wolves, or jackasses. And the jackasses is the ones that brought the wives along. So I assume tigers will be chasing tail, wolves will be chasing something else, and of course, and jackasses that brought the fresh meat for the first two categories. Then same joke goes, women, They are, uh, can be divided on dam, ni dam, and dam, no ni vam. And this is a really funny uh, word uh, play because dama, this is like madame, right? Female. In Russian, we say dama. So that's the female. And that's the one that has classy woman, right? So she is dama. Then ni dama, so the one that's not a classy woman. So it sounds like they're talking that all the women can be separated on 
you know, ladies, not really ladies. And then they say, Dam no ni vam. And the game here, word game here is that Dam also means like, I'll let you have it. So it's actually a joke that all the ladies, uh, they will let you have it, won't let you have it, or they will let have it, but not to you. Dam no ni vam. So unfortunately it's that it doesn't work really well in English, but it's really funny. Um, joke in Russian. November 9, Copenhagen. We arrived to Copenhagen a little bit earlier than schedule and the ship was uh, parked at the beautiful place and we all took off right away so they went on the shore. And then it goes interestingly. It says local businessman gave Ilya, so Ilya I guess one of the people who is in charge of this group. So local uh, businessman entrepreneurs, предприниматели, uh, passed Ilya the address uh, where to go to visit. So that's what they like suggest, hey, that's where you need to go shopping. And Nelly continues and listen very carefully what she says here. She's like, yeah, but first of all, we had to take care of our business before start shopping. Like everyone else, we're running around in order to sell our two bottles of vodka. We bought them in the bar of the ship. Barely, barely managed to sell it. So, he, so here's one answer. Someone posted a question. He couldn't understand the math. Uh, how come uh, this lady managed to purchase 40 pounds, British pounds, if she had only $32? So, of course, you need to keep in mind, she wrote this diary for her daughter, like what, 15-year-old or 13-year-old daughter. So, of course, she didn't write a lot of specifics what they did on the cruise besides looking at the, you know, London and Paris. So here we go. Here she writes what she did. So they buy vodka in the bar and sounds like they allowed to purchase only two bottles per person. Then they sell that vodka somewhere on the street. So they go to some stores uh, and they use that cash for shopping. So it sounds to me like this is the day, this is the place for major shopping. Because she continues, there are a total of us of 500 people. So the whole ship, the tourists, there were 500 people. So we finally made it to the Polish stores. So I guess in Copenhagen, there's an area where the Polish stores are. And says, everyone wants to buy something. And obviously all the sellers were tired. So you got 500 people that trying to buy something like right now, right now, right now. <laughs> She says, but it's not our fault. They understand our language. If you remember, she constantly complains that like England, France, and other places, she felt like dummy, like a f person from a different planet because no one understands Russian. She doesn't understand the English or French. And here, Polish people, you know, Polish language is pretty close to Russian. So you can understand each other pretty good. I mean pretty decent especially if you have a little practice and she says prices are uh, way cheaper here and even with our miser miserable cash we are able to buy something in pretty decent quality so we spend a lot of time and we stayed those stores up to 23 30 military time which means they were there up to 11 30 at night then she uh, gives her shopping list her achievement list I purchased, and she says uh, the rate of exchange was uh, $1 for 5.5 kronas. So she purchased uh, mohir, so that's that oh, stuff for making sweaters and scarves, mohir, right, uh, for th 3 kronas. Then she bought a, a windbreaker jacket for 20 kronas and umbrella for 13 kronas. So that gives you ideas like what people wanted to buy I mean, basic items, but she's excited to purchase it in Copenhagen. Then Nelly says, all my shopping was possible because of vodka. So she just admits that because she already was out of uh, foreign currencies just because she was able to use her rubles to buy vodka on the ship, sell the vodka on the shore. Now she could afford to buy some cool things. So we walked back to the ship very, very tired. And it's interesting she said they walked so there was no bus ride to the shopping area so it looks like it was just like okay have a free time on the shore do whatever you want 
So they had to walk around to find that Polish uh, shopping area. They loaded it up. Now they have to carry all things back to the ship. It says tomorrow we'll be uh, checking out uh, the city, but today it was only shopping time. November 10, after early breakfast on the ship, we all disembarked. We Everyone takes a lot of pictures. We looking at the parks, bridges, statues, everything looks so great, especially the famous mermaid, the symbol of the city. I saw a school and there were tons of kids, looks like little birdies. There are a lot of bikes around. Everyone is riding bike to school or work. Even old grandma wearing pants and riding the bike. So once again, they're on the bus and they talking to the guide, asking questions about life in Denmark. She said half of the school are state owned, the rest are private. Teacher in school makes 6,300 kronas. On a factory, you can make about 10,000 kronas. People that uh, do like basic work uh, make about 500 a week. Apartment without any conveniences, 300 kronas. They loaded nice apartment, 1,000. One place in kindergarten is 2,000 kronas a year. So you see like all these little questions about finances they asking in every country. Then she continues, uh, we had a dinner on the ship and dinners always had fr uh, fruit. So that's interesting because, you know, like in Soviet Union, once season is done, you can't find any cucumbers, any tomatoes. Like you gotta wait till the next summer to see tomatoes again. So we were really like vitamin deficient because you couldn't buy or if you, you can, you need to go to the bazaar and pay arm and leg for oranges from Georgia or something like that. So she's very impressed that every meal has uh, some kind of fruit, you know, bananas, oranges, uh, whatever. And the last words in her entry from November 10 says, tomorrow will be 17 years uh, since we are officially connected. It's translated, but it sounds like she's talking about marriage. And she says engaged on the paper so she considers her marriage failed but it's 17 years since they married on the paper and said if, if everything will be okay i'll let you know about the date so it sounds like she is mentally prepared for divorce and said if everything's fine i'll let you know about the date of our divorce next entry is november 12 helsinki and i want to apologize uh, to my viewers they were all excited uh, waiting for helsinki capital of Finland, and it's literally two lines here. I guess she just was so tired. She didn't say anything about the city. She just said that here in Helsinki stores are also packed full, but she's just tired. She has no, she's not in the mood, Not has no desire to look at the stuff, and especially because here they pay only a quarter of the price for vodka, otherwise we're out of money. So yeah, my Finnish comrades are very sorry, but she didn't write anything about Helsinki except that Finns didn't want to pay full price for vodka and they had full uh, stores that are full of stuff. Super short entry, <laughs> I apologize for that. All right, so we are almost there. I want to thank everyone who has a lot of patience to go with me through the Soviet cruise diaries. As I mentioned, Every video uh, that I post, I see there's a less and less views and it tells me YouTube now can analyze and says, hey, this video, uh, you actually lost five subscribers, you lost two subscribers. So there's the flow, you know, the people uh, subscribe, people unsubscribe, not a big deal. Some videos bring me a thousand subscribers. Uh, Soviet cruise is actually not popular, but I think it's a really good topic to discuss and I'm learning too. So as I said, we're almost there. Uh, we got only a couple more entries, November 13, November 14 and 15. It's pretty much coming back to Leningrad. So we got Leningrad, Moscow, and I think it's very important. This is really cool what she writes after seeing uh, Western Europe for two weeks. Now she comes back to her homeland and how she now look at her Soviet reality after having a taste of 
capitalist reality. So I think it's, you guys are going to like it. It's really cool. So we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life and so